Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters. Today is Wednesday, February 17th. It is 9.38 in the morning. Again, this is going to be another fast one. Forgive me for these fast tapings. Okay, we're going to start off with a sound saying from Psalms 37, 5. And it says, Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he will bring it to pass. Commit your ways unto the Lord. Um, that means all that you do. Commit them unto the Lord. Do them as if you're doing them for the Lord. Okay? Do them as if you work for the Lord. No matter what it is that you do in life, do it unto the Lord. And trust also in him in all that you need. Okay, don't put your trust in men because you will be setting yourself up for disappointment. But if you put your trust in God, you are setting yourself for mighty blessing and protection. And all that comes with the, uh, with placing your trust in God. Okay, because what? He is faithful. He is a faithful God, a supernatural entity. That failure is not a part of his character. Okay? So you can't go wrong putting your trust in God. And he shall bring it to pass, as the word says, according to his will in your life. Okay? The back is coming from Nehem 1.7. And it says, the Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble. And he knoweth them that trust in him. Yes, we know this because God can read your heart. Um, he can tell whether your trust for him is solid as a rock or as weak as a, a small wave. Okay, some people are very wavy, they changing, they love God one minute, they 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 somewhat love him the next, they don't know him the next minute, and then they back, fall in love with him again. That that's that's just a that's not even love. I, I have no description for it. Okay? But if you love God, he knows that your love is good or strong. Okay, so um Learn to trust in God, and when you have trouble in your life, and you call out for him, he will answer thee. No delay, no dial tone, okay? Uh, and he knows them that trust in him. He knows who you are, all right? Um, as I promised you, I promised my father that I will be a little bit more tuned into what I'm supposed to do, so that's why we're doing these early morning uh, recordings, and uh, I will again give you a few, if not words, but verses. Um, the first word I gave you yesterday, it was Zechariah, that is the father of John the Baptist, okay? And it means God remembers. It comes from a Hebrew word, Zechar, meaning remember. It means to remember, okay? And uh, we're going to read Luke 1, 11 to 14. And this was the encounter that um, Zechariah had with Gabriel. It was Zechariah's uh, turn to go into the sacred uh, temple and do his duties. And while he was there, he had an encounter with Gabriel and uh, of course, because he had this encounter with Gabriel, he was in there uh, a lot longer than what it normally takes to do the job. And it just baffled all those that were outside praying that it was taking him so long. So we're going to just go through a few verses of the conversation <laughs> that occurred. And Luke 1, 11 says, and, the, and there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. So uh, he was not there when Zechariah walked into the sacred house, but um, he appeared shortly after. Okay. 
Luke 1, 12, and when Zachariah saw him, he was troubled and fear fell upon him. Quite naturally, when someone comes into your home and does not use the window or the door and just so, just shows up, that's going to obviously give you a sense of concern. Okay. Um, one th Luke 1, 13, but the angel said unto him, fear not, Zacharias. For well, thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. So John uh, was among one of the servants that was called uh, in the wound. His calling came in the wound as the Lord's calling also was from the wound. Okay. Um, Luke 1, 14, and thou shall have joy and gladness, and may many shall rejoice at his birth. Yes, because at the time, Zechariah was quite uh, up in age, and so was his wife. She was way beyond childbearing, and however, she gave birth to a beautiful son, and uh, yes, it was gladness in, in, in the biblical time, because it was un heard of for a woman of her age to deliver a child, okay? Uh, John was his name, and he was known as the Baptist because he called on his followers to go through a ceremony of baptism to demonstrate their repentance for their sin. Jesus began his public uh, life by submitting himself to John's baptism. So, yes, <laughs> it was an awkward um moment for John because John thought that he should be baptized by his Lord but as the Lord said let it be so because it was the way God his father intended it to be okay and in Luke 1 15 for he shall be great in the sight of the Lord and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink and he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost even from his mother's womb as I said his ordination was in the wound. Uh, One sixteen, and many of the children of Israel shall he turn to to the Lord their God. One seventeen, and he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Le Elias to turn the hearts of the father to the children and the disobedience to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepare for the Lord. One eighteen and Zechariah said unto the angel, Whereby shall I know this? For I am an old man and my wife well stricken in years. One nineteen, Luke one nineteen, and the angel answered and said unto him, I am Gabriel that standeth in the presence of God, and am sent to speak unto thee, and to show thee these glad tidings, which it means good news. Um, one twenty, we will end off with that. And behold, thou shalt be dumb and not be able to speak until the day that these things shall be performed, because thou believest it not my word, which shall be fulfilled in their season. So yes, he was chastised for not believing in that which the angel Gabriel was saying to him. And it's always better to be a believer like Mary. Mary accepted it right away. Let it be unto me, uh, is what she said. But Zechariah said, how should this be? So that, that was a huge question mark there. And a question mark always reflects doubt. All right. So we're going to read a, a very short psalm today. It's only 11 verses. It is Psalm 95. And the colorful Bible, it says, Psalm of praise to the great king, our maker. Okay? He is our maker. He is also the maker of the place we reside called earth and everything in it and everything around it, including the Milky Way and everything above it. Okay? Uh, this is our 11 verse uh, reading. It has some uppercase letterings here from 8 to 11. It's uppercase. It is also black. Uh, we have red for discipleship and purple for the Trinity. So I'm going to read it from the Colorful Bible this morning. 
And it says, Oh, come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Amen. And he, and he is exactly that. He is the rock of your salvation. Uh, he is the one that you can count on uh, more so than your parents, than your spouse, than any human uh, relationship you may have. All right. Oh, come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. To let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him with psalms. Amen. Um, three, four, and five is purple for the Trinity. The Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. And this Lord, this latter God is lowercase g o d s, which means that they are not gods, they are imaginary gods. Okay. In his hand are the deep places of the earth. The strength of the hills is his also. Yes, uh, there is nothing crawling around on this earth that God does not know about it. There is much uh, on this earth that we as human have yet to discover. But God knows everything that is on this earth. Everything. Every creature. No matter how strange it may be. Okay, um, five, the sea is his and he made it and his hands formed the dry land that we walk upon. Okay, that shows you the magnitude of his power and authority. Okay, six and seven, back to red for discipleship. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. Seven. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today, if ye will hear his voice, listen to it. If you hear it, listen to it. For it will never lead you astray. Never. All right? Okay, here comes the black bold letterings. Hearken not your heart, as in the provocation, which was uh, when they were in the wilderness. It's called the provocation because uh, during that time that the people were in the wilderness, they continuously provoked God. Continuously. No matter what he did in their presence, they still had much doubt in their heart. They still did not believe that he was capable of doing anything. Anything. Okay, so that's why it's called the period of provocation. Okay, and in this period, so many times he wanted to destroy these people that he had rescued so many times. But because of Moses, he did not. Because Moses always was concerned about what the Egyptians would think. Hearken not your heart as in the provocation and in, as in the day of temptation in the wilderness. 9. When your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works. 10. Forty years long was I grieved with this generation and said, It is a people that do not irk, that do irk in their heart and they have not known my ways, though he has shown his might in so many ways. The splitting of the Red Sea, uh, the meat, uh, the manna. It doesn't matter. Ro water from the rock, no matter what God did. They were still a doubtful generation of people. A people worth destroying. Unfortunately, Moses Always thought about what others would think about what God has done. Okay. 11. I will read 10 again. 40 years long was I grieved with this generation and said, It is a people that do irk in their heart and they do not know my way. So in the provocation, it took 40 years, but we've been irking God for over 150 years. Okay. We've been we've been in the midst of the monstrosity going on on this earth for over 150 years. So if they were punished for what they did, I can't imagine why you think this generation is above reproach. 
Okay, 11, unto whom I swore in my wrath that they shall not enter into my rest, and they did not. Uh, many of those that were above the age of 20 did not make it into the promised land except for uh, Joshua and Selah, uh, whose heart woolly followed God. And this is what we need to do. We need to woolly follow God in all our ways, including in the laws that we implement. Thank you very much for listening to us here at Spiritual Water. I am so sorry that it is a rush job, but a rush job is always better than no job at all. Please have a wonderful day. Be careful, be mindful, be kind and compassionate, especially to those who give you ill words. Okay, and to those that are hard to love, that pleases God, when you can love those that are hard to love. Thank you, and have a beautiful day. And as always, may the peace of God be upon you, may the protection of God surround you, and may the will of God in your life and in this earth come to pass. Thank you, and I love you.